Okay, so our last presenter today is Noelani Goodyear Kaupua, Dr. Noelani Goodyear Kaupua. Uh, she's an associate professor of political science at UH Manoa and co-founder of Halau Kumana Public Charter School. She's the author of The Seeds We Planted, Portraits of a Native Hawaiian Charter School, and co-edited and Nation Rising, Hawaiian Movements for Life, Land, and Sovereignty, as well as The Value of Hawaii, Volume 2. Aloha e nā akua, nā kupuna, uh, nā hoa kanaka, mai ka lahi ki aka lākau. Aloha kāko. Um, I'm really honored to be here with these uh, two great other panelists and... Hi, honey. <laughs> and um, especially, you know, I think complimenting uh, Professor Chang well, he studies law and I study politics and I think one of the differences between um, these two realms is that politics is about power and while I wish that political battles could be won just with fact, they're so often about claims to the truth and not necessarily factual truth. Um, so a lot of what politics is about, especially from a Hawaiian perspective, right, is gathering the mana behind our truths, our, our claims to the truth and um, and increasing that mana. And a lot of what I'm going to talk about today in terms of our ea, Hawaii, our sovereignty, our independence, which is like breath, it's life, it needs active doing constantly, day after day, um, is really inspired by the words of our queen, Lili Uokalanu, who said that the voice of the people is the voice of God. Um, and so a lot of what I want to share to address the first question, how does Hawaii's history inform the path to Hawaiian independence, has to do with the way that our own people are narrating our history. And that's happening in such a powerful way, um, I think, that has changed quite a bit over the last 10, 20 years. Um, and so what I want to, what I want to do um, actually to begin with is to, um, I'm going to kind of, uh, this first portion of the presentation is really kind of focused on um, mele or poetry, and I'm going to share a poem that dr weaves uh, our people's voices together. Um, but the first mele that I want to start with in terms of how our history informs um, our path to independence today is this line from our national anthem, Hawaii Pono'i, in the third um, verse, right, where it says, Hawaii Pono'i e kalahui e, that's us. O kauhana nui, your greatest task e uie, to ask, to question, to appeal, to rise up. And I think this is such a powerful thing that our national anthem tells us, the citizenry, that our duty is to ask questions. And that's a very different kind of approach than many, many countries in the world that want a sort of patriotism that doesn't ask questions, that doesn't encourage independent thinking. Um, but our kupuna, encouraged us in our national anthem to ask questions, to stir up, to activate. And so I think that's really important. Um, and so what I want to really focus this first um, poem on is this uprising that happened in 2014 that actually really surprised me, probably surprised a lot of you, um, and I know a lot of you were a part of. Um, because I saw f familiar faces there. And this was when the Department of Interior came to the islands and with only a few days notice asked our people to answer these five threshold questions that are on the side here that basically all have to do with should a path be established for federal recognition. And they, they brought a whole panel here, right, to hear. Most of you probably saw some of these testimonies or these um, consultation meetings uh, if you weren't there. Um, our family went to a few, but we followed a lot of it live streaming on TV and meeting after meeting, what was really stunning to me was how many of our people were coming out and saying, we are Hawaiian nationals, we reject U.S. jurisdiction in Hawaii, um, this was not an organized effort to bring people, you know, across all islands, it was organic. And that was something that stunned me um, in many ways because it speaks to the power of education and the education 
um, that has come forward over the last 10 or 20 years or so. So the poem that I'm going to share with you guys started because I started doing, I started putting all the written transcripts. There's over a thousand pages of written transcripts from the verbal testimonies on, on all the different islands. They fit in a, like a paper, you know, the uh, box that you get the copy paper in. You can pretty much fill um, that with all of the pages of testimony that came from that. So I started running these um, testimonies through a data mining program to look at the frequency of words that were coming up and filtering out for like the and 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 common words like that. Um, and what I saw was this pattern that was really interesting where, of course, Hawaiian comes up very frequently. Um, the, and then two words in the top five words of all of these different testimonies across all the islands, different communities from Hana to Keokaha, um, from Heeia to Waianae, um, Kaunakakai, is that the word no, N-O, and the word no, K-N-O-W, to no, came up in the top five most frequently used words in almost every community. And that was really stunning to me because um, for one thing, the, the frequency of saying no was, people were saying no to the Department of Interior's questions. They were saying, no, we don't want your offer of federal recognition. No, thank you. Um, but this assertion of no, um, K-N-O-W, was really uh, speaking again to that power of education that our people were saying, this is what we know, and this is what we want you to know, and this is what you don't know, and this is what you should know. <laughs> And it's pretty amazing when you start reading all the testimonies of what our people said. So that inspired me to write um, this poem um, that draws on the testimonies. And um, let me also say that one of the reasons why I feel it's so important to uncover the actual words that people were saying is because the Department of Interior went through all of this trouble to bring this panel over to hold all these meetings after they had um, released their advance notice of proposed rulemaking. And then after the advance notice, they released several months later a notice of proposed rulemaking. So it's kind of like the follow-up. And I'll just read you very briefly. Um, there's just two sentences that I want to read from this, although there's lots in here. So the ANPREM, which is the advance notice of propo proposed rulemaking, which came out in... Um, just before the summer 2014, marks the beginning of ongoing discussions with the Native Hawaiian community, consultations with federally recognized tribes in the continental US and input from the public at large. Okay, that's the end of that paragraph. Then the, the next paragraph starts, the department received over 5,100 written doc comments by the August 19th, 2014 deadline, more than half of which were identical postcards submitted in support of reestablishing a government to government relationship through federal rulemaking. There is absolutely no mention in the 20 plus pages that came out of all of that huge box of thousands of um, important, you know, mana'o from our people that the DOI recognized. So they said, uh, they, they basically didn't even mention all of these words. So this is why for me it's, um, so important to bring those words back to the surface because they're the words of our people. And they speak to what we know. Ku loku loku i we will drench you in the torrent of our knowing. For 121 years, we have been illegally occupied by your country, but this is not all you did. You made sure to put the cultural bomb into full effect by taking away our language and teaching us your history and not our own, thereby totally alienating us from who we are. But what you didn't realize is that our ancestors left us our history. Today we are thriving. We know our history and our language is coming back, and now we know your laws better than you do. Leslie Iaokea, Kahului Maui. I want to tell you a story. Sorry, this is my words now. I want to tell you a story, generations old, suppressed but never fully silenced. If you listen closely, you can hear it in the rain, the chaotic cacophony, a rhythm, a remembering. Okaua pakakahi, pakalua, pakapakaua. 
I was seven years old when my tutu man was with me and all the ruckus was going on about statehood. And as a seven year old, I said, Papa, what does that do for us? Oh, sorry. He said, nothing. I said, did you vote, Papa? No, he said, they don't represent you. Know who you are and I know who I am. Sandra Phillips, pa heia. O kaua paka kahi paka lua paka paka ua paka ua. We are Hawaiian subjects, as our kupuna before us, who signed the Ku'e petitions of 1897. They laid a firm foundation for us, and all we have to do is remember and stand together with courage and let the United States, the state of Hawaii, and the Office of Hawaiian Affairs know that we know who we are. Leilani Lindsay Ka'apuni, Keo Kaha Hawaii. The rains. Kaua Lokuhala, Lani Pili, Lani Polua, Kaua Koili Pilipi, Paiola Pava, Hale Ole, pouring, pounding, drenching, resounding, rains of knowing, rains of no ing, breaking open parched earth, hydrating shriveled minds, quenching ancestral thirsts. I will definitely let my, my children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren know that an injustice was done, so I stand here for them knowing that I know that my tutu signed the petition against annexation. I know our queen did not want this. So I stand here knowing all of this to let my grandchildren know that I am here today. Alona Naomi Cortero, Keokaha, Hawaii. Reigns of knowing. O kaua pakakahi, pakalua, pakapakaua, pakaua ku loku loku. Pulupe Pawikawai, we are soaked in ancestral connections. We want to be free from your oppression and we want to be our same people as we was in the past. We want to be us Kanaka Maoli's. We want to care for our own aina, our land, our water, our sea. Max Maderas, Waimea Kawai. Okawai Kaheaku, Kahei Kahei Kahe Kahewai, the streams swelling. They tell us stories in routes spreading across the landscape, carrying stones that seed and beat against one another in their surging love. I aloha everybody because we all share the same God, our creator. I just feel there's too much mistrust and I think the cry for our unity, not the state government, I'm talking about our people, the people, the people who eat dirt, the people who work hard, the people who have to live here and struggle. Bridget Mawet, Kaunakakai, Molokai. Oke kahawai, kahaku, kahai kai, kaha kahawai. Aloha, my heart is racing right now. There's so much hurt and so much misunderstanding and so much lack of education. My name is Abraham Kaivaiva Makanui. I came here when I was five years old with my mom and I lived here ever since. I've endeared myself into this island, and this island has endeared itself into me. I have seen over 46 years of decimation of our Kanaka lifestyle thanks to the capitalism and greed that comes along with Americana, okay? I'm a blue collar worker. I bust my ass every day to keep my family afloat in this capitalistic world. You're looking into my eyes and my heart. We need to get together as Kanaka Maoli. We need to get together and become strong. We can do this. We don't need anybody else. It's a five no. Abraham Makanui Kapa'akawai. Streams of Waipio, Waihe'e, Wailuku, Wailua Nui, connecting, feeding, soothing, breathing, waters of Waiahole, Waiahi, Waiahuakua, Waihohonu, Waiakanayo, rising, roaring, clearing, restoring. We derive our strength from our aina, and it is our deep aloha for aina that is the foundation for our liberation. We know our past, as you have seen over the past week and tonight, and while the U.S. may be part of our presence by its own power, its utter disregard for the well-being of our aina and lahui has deemed it necessary that we envision and enact a future for our children and grandchildren in which our nation, Kalahui Kanaka, thrives independent of the United States again. There is nothing of greater value than Kanaka living independently for the aloha of our aina. This is the political consciousness of our kupuna. This is the foundation of our nation. No eau peralto, ke au kaha hawaii. O kawai kahe aku, kahe kai, kahe kahe wai. O ke kaha wai, kaha aku, kaha kai, kaha kaha wai, kaha wai. 
Pau ke kolonaio i ke poi o ke kai. We will crush would-be conquerors with our waves of repudiation, breaking over their shallow audacity, lifting up wave riders who humble themselves before Kanaloa. If you knew just a little bit about our nation's history and your nation's history and relationship with our nation, then you would see, like so many people have already been saying, that you have no jurisdiction here. And so I don't really feel a need to answer your questions in the first place, but because I know how your nation does things, I will say no, 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 no. Go back and talk to the people who have the power in your nation, or better yet, you know, if you want to give up your citizenship and come join us, I'm sure we can talk story about that. Shavan Matsuda, Hana. Listen for the rhythm in the swells, waves rolling under the weight of their own truth, gathering momentum, cresting, crashing, spreading, smashing, a deluge of refusal, flooding every crevice. Oke kai nalu hai pa lua pa ha nalu hai pa valu o kanalu na nalu o napili o lele ivi o kaivi o uha ilio o kamilo kau. My grandmother knew and spoke to me about the events of 1893. She lived to be a hundred. Fortunately, she lived with us, and so what I know is my family said no to the Committee of Safety and to the Provisional Government. We said no in 1895 to the Kauakuloku. We said no in 1897 to annexation and signed the Hui Aloha Aina petition here on Maui and Honolulu. Years later, I asked my mother how did she vote in 1959 to the question of Hawaii becoming a state, and she said no. Now, we know our history. Waters Omar Finn Jr. Lahaina, Maui. Poi poi na nalu, papa pu, papa pu, hai hai na nalu, papa pu, papa pu, o kanalu hai, o kai ko'o, o kalai loa, o kalai hua vehe, o luma hai, o makaha, o hano. Mahalo for your offer. Your solution of a government to government relations is both too little and too late. No to all your questions. It has become painfully obvious from these hearings that those Hawaiian leaders who have called you here in hopes of protecting our entitlements and increasing federal funding have done so without consulting their people. Walter Ridi, Kaunakakai, Molokai. Oke kai nalu hai pa lua pa ha nalu hai pa valu oka nalu poi 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 na nalu papa pu papa pu hai hai na nalu papa pu papa pu oka nalu hai papa pu papa pau. I've got nothing deep or profound to say. All I can say is I'm a Kanaka Maoli and I'm not an American. I live in an American occupied country and I've got to do it every day. We will get it back. Every day we fight for this damn thing. Papa pu, papa po. So, yeah, the voices of our people are so powerful and inspiring. Um, it feels like a good time to be Kanaka, to be a Hawaiian. Um, so what I want to just kind of close with is a little bit of response to the question of, okay, what do we do now? Where do we go next? Um, and Professor Chang talked a lot about this um, process that I see as a very problematic and um, insufficient process. Um, and I won't go into it in deep depth because he really talked about it. But basically, all I'm going to point out here is that it really starts with the state legislator, the occupier, right, the settler state, and them passing uh, Act 195. And that's essentially how the genealogy of how we get to today. And so that, to me, is problematic in and of itself. It has to come from, um, as our queen said, the people, not from the occupier. Um, so. What I um, have proposed, and these are just principles. This is just like mana'o throwing out there as an idea, um, not anything that I feel should be sort of taken as a dogmatic blueprint for what I think is the future or should be the future path. But some basic principles that I think that the current um, aha na puni you know, was not um, an example of, and that there are other examples, I think, in our community that I'll mention briefly, um, is 
one inclusiveness, that there have to be many opportunities to opt in or opt out of a process. And all along with the Native Hawaiian role, it was always sort of about fear. If you don't opt in now, you're gonna get left out. This is your last chance. The state is gonna recognize the people on the role as Hawaiians and that's it. You're either in or you're out. And even since the AHA, I've seen quite a bit of um, kind of dialogue, maybe on Facebook too much, <laughs> where it's sort of like, well, you either you either get in now or you get out. This you know you're either in or you're out. And to me, that's not how we do things. As you know, Dr. Kawai talked about with the kingdom, there was always this um, sense of inclusion and inclusiveness and opportunities for us to participate. Or if we saw it being heva not to participate, right? Um, education and informed participation. The other thing that um, I think our movement, our Hawaiian movements have been incredibly good about and amazing about over the last 40 or uh, years or so is education, that we have very much committed to education. Um, and even those who supported federal recognition up until I would say 2000 were doing education and outreach. Kalahui Hawaii, for example, was a good example of a grassroots um, effort that was um, some a, a large majority of whom supported federal recognition, but they were doing grassroots education. Um, and really, it's after 2000 and the Akaka Bill that that turns toward PR and lobbying rather than education. And so I think what we have on the independent side of the movement is that we've maintained our commitment to education and informed participation. Um, so any process needs to continue to include that. Transparency and documentation, um, there needs to be at all stages of any process of a government formation, um, full public participation and, and documentation. Um, building from the ground up, you know, that we uh, build from the base of this informed people and then sort of begin to coalesce at a island, uh, regional and national level. So, um, I was thinking about this a lot this semester as I was reading again um, Dr. Kamana Beamer's book, Namako Kamana, and the way he talks about how the office of the Mo'i, that position within our government, um, develops over time, over many, many generations. Um, and what he really shows is how our government develops in comp increasingly complex ways, but from the ground up, that it starts with the people on the aina and the land divisions, um, and then the aha ali'i forms, and it's not until several generations later, I think it's like eight to 12 generations later, that the office of the mo'i forms. So we know from our history as Kanaka um, of the way our state has developed over time that that was how it developed. Yeah, it, it became increasingly complex over time, but from the, literally the ground up, from the aina to the people and further up. Um, Kulia Ikanu'u, this just sort of echoes something that I think Professor Chang said, which is that uh, we need to do it right, not fast. If we're going to rebuild a governing apparatus, um, a government, we have to not be bound by some arbitrary timeline. It has to be done um, with the striving for excellence that our kupuna modeled for us. And then lastly, I believe that um, before we deal with the question of recognition, whether international or federal, that we really need to talk about what we want the government to look like, how we want it to function. Um, and that's a different sort of question than the debate over should we be federally recognized or should we be independent. Um, and I've always been on the independent side of that question since um, I first met Dr. K. Kuni Blaisdell um, in, in the early 1990s, but I also think that um, we need to start talking about the how is the government going to actually work? What are, how is it going to function? What is going to be the structure? And so I don't have a proposed structure that I think it should um, follow, but I do have an idea about proposed process that we might think about. And so this, um, it's also on a blog post that I can share the URL for if you're interested in kind of looking at it more in depth. But the basic idea is that I think that rather than starting at um, a centralized national level, there has to be um, the local regional constituent assemblies that then come together in the national. So this is something that the that AHA 
um, Na'iyao Puni didn't do, which is that it convened a centralized aha on O'ahu and did not allow for any kind of convening at a more regional level. Um, what the aha aloha aina, in contrast, is doing is convening at that um, community scale regional level. And so, um, have these, they're on Facebook and social media, but there's a meeting, for example, this Saturday in Papakolea for the Aha Aloha Aina, um, and I'll just pass those around if anyone wants to take them. I know if Kalama Nihe were had been able to be here, she would have spoken about this, uh, this process a little bit more um, and how it builds on the idea of the kino um, in terms of our uh, national structure. Um, but I really think that this provides a different approach, which is, again, building from the ground up, starting with the um, needs and strengths of particular communities on their aina, and then kind of building from there. Now, that takes a lot longer. It certainly takes a lot more work, but I think it also means, in the long run, more buy-in um, and more ownership. And I really believe that the kind of governance that we have practiced both in the kingdom and prior to the kingdom, um, when you know we exercised our ea in our more traditional forms, um, really respected that relationship of people to specific places. Um, so I'll just end with this olelo no eo that comes from the mo'olelo of Kamiki and was um, I this olelo no eo was introduced to me by um, no eo Peralta, who I quoted earlier. And it says, Ho'okahua ka'aina hanau ke kanaka, ho'okahua ke kanaka hanau ke ali'i. The land creates the foundation upon which the people are born, and the people create the foundation upon which the chiefs are born. And I think that this is really important kupuna wisdom for us for how to proceed forward. Mahalo.